thanks for tuning in. This is Michael W. Ford. This uh, YouTube uh, channel, uh, considering Luciferianism as a methodology and a practice in the art of magic, one thing that I haven't presented clearly is the ideology behind it. There is an ideology which stands alone independently and prior to Luciferian magic. How does that work? Ideology is the core component which allows the mind to truly initiate itself in the practice of Luciferianism. It's more than specific rituals, circle castings, spell, sorcery, dream magic. It's more than any of that. First and foremost, it is an ideology towards self-excellence. Much like Satanism, Luciferianism believes in this world here and now, and that you are accountable for your actions, words, all of these things not only in your immediate present, but in your future as well. The carnal human being, as I'll call it man, has basic desires that have to be met. If not, they tend to be very unhappy people. Humans also have a instinctual quality to be a part of a tribe. And many um, are conditioned via TV media to fit in. You should get this because it, it will make you look like this. You should uh, do this because everyone is doing that. Luciferianism understands that the tribal and social contracts are important. However, that the individual must begin a process of first self-liberation from restrictive beliefs, dogmas, and all of these superstitions piled upon us by media, by parents, by our immediate culture that we exist in daily. There's also inherent beliefs that are pressed upon us as children from before our earliest memory throughout our lives that as you begin as a Satanist or Luciferian you're going to think to some as uh, extent that this is still with me there are certain things I do and believe in the back of my mind that cause doubt well one of the ways that I overcame the doubt of is there something more religious and whatever from when I was a kid is to study and explore the origins of that which I was so drawn to, which I had an instinctive passion for, and that is the concept of the adversary uh, in many different religions, in many different uh, cultures, but all exhibiting similar traits and representations. So let's understand from a Luciferian or Satanic perspective the image of the adversary. The satanic image of the pentagram with the goat, the Baphomet head, is today in modern times a threatening symbol of forbidden rituals and things inherently that Christians used to do and that they just pressed upon uh, modern Luciferians or Satanists. The image of the devil from a Milton uh, perspective is Lucifer the light bringer, the fallen angel who questions uh, authority, who wants independence, individualism, and holds high in esteem the traits of the one who overcomes his obstacles, the one who manifests his desired future. That is the image of Lucifer as the one who illuminates, who brings the torch, the fire of 
consciousness. That is why it is called Luciferianism. But also going back to prior to Bronze Age, Iron Age, ancient Near East, associated with the planet Venus, morning and evening star, are a whole line of local temple cults set up to different gods and goddesses, all associated with what we now perceive as Lucifer, the light bringer, the adversary. Lucifer is very much a symbolic representation of our inner passion. As a Satanist, the first step is self-liberation from moralistic dogma and beliefs that have no purpose today. The Luciferian realizes that Christianity as it is, and as it was, is nothing more than a control technique, a control operation, uh, which developed from the late Roman Empire at a time when 98% were below poverty level and had nothing to look forward to. Luciferianism acknowledges that today we all have possibilities to varying degrees of our own potential in achieving goals and what we, we may be driven towards in life. We also have science in our corner because the core foundation beliefs of evolution are Luciferian. They're symbolized in myth and legend and spiritual uh, clothing, if you will, in approach to practice. But magic is the key component in how we get there. This is one part of the ideology. The next part is applying it. Perception and logic within Luciferianism is a paramount uh, concept in the foundation of our ideology. Every new initiate or one interested in Luciferianism, uh, I always strongly recommend that you approach the uh, structure of the books in terms of ideology as within the realm of reason, logic, and symbolism accordingly. Symbolism in terms of gods, demons, deific masks, representations of a type of energy in nature or occurrence, natural phenomena, and symbolic to an aspect or occurrence within ourselves. If you do that, you won't fall into the blind faith category and delude yourself to what you're trying to accomplish. I strongly confirm that the gods and demons of the pantheons that are worked with within Luciferianism are tools and masks. Masks of types of subconscious or conscious knowledge, discipline, power. But ultimately, it begins and ends within us and what we put forth. If I were to tell you that gods are real, existing in another realm, I can't prove that to you. You can't experience that. You can't understand uh, that that could be so. My early grimoires, because they were reflections of my workings, personal workings, uh, I presented them just as there were other people that were into this like me. Uh, in recent years, because of uh, the explosion of Luciferianism, it's the responsible thing to to not fall into the theistic category and tell everyone you have to believe in demons and so forth. Approach them as symbols and however it develops within you, within your life and initiation, take that. One thing Luciferians should never do is try to tell someone that Lucifer exists or spirit exists, that gods exist. Especially if you, know, you perform magic personally and your own imagination 
and your truth within the circle, as we call it, your ritual, spiritual uh, universe, if you will, is subjective. Um, now, you can have results based on that, but that could be explained by reason and logic. You always want to use reason and logic uh, in presenting things, because if you get abstract, you're no different than a Christian who says God works in mysterious ways. And I don't question the Word of God because it says it's the Word of God. You have to question everything. So within the grimoires, Dragon of the Two Flames, uh, even Bible of the Adversary, approach it symbolically and what it represents. And when you get into the ideology of applying it, thought, word, action, focus, and then result. That will give you all you need for confirmation in the ideology of Luciferianism. If you want the spirituality, that's a subjective term on your experience and your, your uh, personal life, then it, it would lead there. If you're naturally skeptical um, to the point of you won't accept any spirituality or symbolism within yourself because that's how you're wired, you're a very black and white person, then that's fine too. The one thing I'll tell you in Luciferianism is that we do not um, consider um, demons and ceremonial ritual magic to produce literal demons, etc. In our spiritual practice of magic, that's a different story. When you enter the circle and you're practicing, it may help you to fully experience that. And the feelings and the things that happen may support that mythology. Um, so perception is everything in our ideology. Questioning, but also allowing the possibility for another possi uh, avenue. When I researched Dragon of the Two Flames, that took me all the way back to the cult of Yahweh, and beyond that, um, that really confirmed what I was doing in life and the great work. Uh, because it's reason and logic that shows Yahweh has no valid uh, uh, foothold in the world. of self-deification or being your own god in Satanism and Luciferianism is not the abstract and difficult concept uh, in the everyday reality that we live in. In Luciferianism, self-deification is a continual process. First, you're saying, I am accountable for my own future, the outcome within it, and the things that I achieve, the, the life that I lead. The accidents and things that come into play and screw-ups are kind of taken out of that because to deify yourself is to first, as Luciferian, acknowledge that you, the individual, is responsible for the good or the bad in life. The bad relationships, the good relationships. Um, reoccurring behaviors that cause you to, to not excel at where you want to be. That is the first step in self deification It is self-transformation towards your potential or self-excellence as you would consider it within whatever you're doing. It's learning, it's, it's obtaining knowledge, experience, insight, strengthening the will, discipline, all of these things. Being able to, in a professional way, have discussions with people um, in a work environment to, even when it's against you, to compel your will to something to occur accordingly, a result. The concept of 
the true will in Luciferianism as an ideology is that instinctual drive towards continual self-improvement and excellence. You're not looking for perfection. You're not expecting to be perfect in all of your acts. We screw up. Everyone screws up, makes mistakes. The point is, do you learn something from it, the insight, and can you apply something different in your behavior to make sure that it is limited in the future? The true will is your passion, your instinctual kind of magnet towards what you want to manifest in this world. It can be a job, it can be a, uh, something you're really good at. True will is, is paramount because those traits that you exhibit in the true will are what we call the personal god or the daemon in the magical tradition. I'm not going to go into the daemon. I'm going to speak about it as true will and the uh, inherent dream or instinct that you have towards life itself. You don't have to look at it as some abstract spirituality. On a basic level, all Luciferians and Satanists, I strongly suggest that you take away all the mystical, all the spiritual first, and recognize it in a material, physical, mental uh, sense, and in relation to like quantum mechanics, or physics, and the cause of effect, and that our brains create the energy that can in turn uh, kind of shape the environment we live in. If you do that, you'll have the ideology of this is what true will means, this is what self-deification means doesn't mean that I'm a great, uh, mighty, Judaic God, as Christians would say. If you say to a Christian, I'm my own God. It uh, doesn't mean you bow down and worship yourself. Oh, you created heavens, earth, blah, blah, blah. It's about, I'm in control of my own life, and I'm responsible for my outcomes. And when I have moments of weakness or need to focus or something difficult happens, then I can look to my instinctual guide, that magnet, that, that stone that keeps me centered, and rely on that always, because that will not betray you. Um, it's win is your win, essentially. So self-deification for Satanists and the Luciferian is a continual path, a process in life, part of self-evolution obtaining power and greatness to where five years down the road you can say I've achieved this from where I started. That is when you can truly liberate yourself from Judeo-Christian uh, slave mentality and look at yourself as an uh, uh, individual worthy of your own respect. Self-deification does not mean um, over-exhibiting your pride. Pride is an excellent trait for a Satanist and Luciferian if pride has restraint and uh, respect for others, more or less. No one likes someone who brags constantly. Let your achievements speak for you. 